In 1896, a man by the name of Theodor Herzl wrote what is probably the defining text of Zionist thought, Der Judenstaat, in which he set out his vision of establishing a state for the Jewish people in Argentina? اهلا وسهلا فيكم يا اعزائي المشاهدين ببرنامج التفسير اخبار فلسطين اخبار لكل العالم Let me start by saying that yes the Argentina thing is true The Zionist movement considered several locations for its nation state project before eventually settling on Palestine with the assistance of the British Empire But there's obviously way more to the story than that and we need to unpack it step by step In this new series of videos we're going to tackle what is arguably one of the thorniest ideas of modern history Zionism We're going to answer what is Zionism who are Zionists what is the role of Palestine in Zionist thought? How does Zionism relate to the Jewish people? And, of course, is anti-Zionism really anti-Semitic? We should probably start with a definition of Zionism, but that's already pretty tricky because the main tenets of Zionism have shifted somewhat over time. Let's start by saying that today, Zionism as an ideology is the belief that the state of Israel has a right to exist in Palestine. By extension, Zionism as a political platform is the active support for the state of Israel, whether financial, political, discursive, and so on. That's why Meghan McCain and Mohammed bin Zayed are both enthusiastic Zionists, whether or not they really care about the ideological tenets of Zionism per se. Additionally, in today's common parlance, those who passively normalize the existence of the state of Israel are considered Zionists as well. That's why we say that Madonna is a Zionist, because she enthusiastically performs in Tel Aviv. Well, and this. Anyway, while this is the meaning of Zionism today, it's really important to go back in time and discuss the foundational tenets of Zionism, because as we're about to see, Zionism is fundamentally linked to colonization and apartheid by definition, far more than it's linked to the Palestinian territory itself. In fact, Theodor Herzl, the central figure of Zionism, actively pursued the Zionist objective of a Jewish state in Argentina and even Uganda rather than in Palestine. In the entirety of Der Judenstadt, the issue of territory is discussed in just one short section, Palestine or Argentine, the only section of the text that mentions Palestine at all. According to Herzl, the government of Argentina would be happy to hand over a section of its vast fertile lands for a quick buck. As for Palestine, Herzl's reasoning was completely based in the European colonial imaginary. According to Herzl, the Jewish state would form a rampart of Europe against Asia, an outpost of civilization as opposed to barbarism. While Europe would have to guarantee the state's existence, the sanctuaries of Christendom would be safeguarded. Safeguarded from... Mohammedans? As you can see, Zionist settlement was always going to be enabled by and a continuation of European imperialism, regardless of where it took place. Recently, Zionist propaganda has sought to counter the colonial baggage of Zionism by leaning into identity politics and discussing non-European Jewish immigration into Palestine. Take a look. Hey, this is me, the Zionist Israeli, the white colonialist settler occupier. When you describe Zionism as this white imperialist idea, you actively delete the history of black and brown Jews. You dismiss our stories, struggle, and survival. You ignore the fact that the Zionist cause have built a safe home for Jews like us. When you think about Zionism, you probably think of Theodor Herzl, 1897, and the first Zionist Congress in Basel. But for me, I think about Abba Mahali, an Ethiopian Jewish monk, that in 1862, 35 years before the Zionist Congress, have led many of my community in a journey from Ethiopia to Jerusalem by foot. The journey wasn't successful and many people died. But what I take from this story is the amazing courage of my ancestors and pursuing the Zionist dream of living safely back in their homeland. Just to clarify what's wrong with this story, firstly, it's totally anachronistic to say Jewish immigration into Palestine was fulfilling the Zionist dream before Zionism even existed. Not to mention Zionism was not about Jewish immigration into Palestine, but about establishing a Jewish state, whether in Argentina or my backyard. Secondly, it's very destructive to link the many other motivations for Jewish immigration into Palestine with Zionism specifically. Saying that Jewish refugees, for instance, were moving to Palestine specifically to carve out their own independent state just echoes some of the vilest conspiracy theories about Jews and their underlying motivations. Peddling these types of anti-Semitic tropes while trying to rewrite Jewish history is just one of many reasons why it's actually Zionist propaganda and Israeli discourses that are deeply anti-Semitic. Sadly, just like these Zionists today, Herzl and his cronies deliberately co-opted Jewish refugees of their time for their own aims, even asking countries like the United States to reject Central European Jews and send them to Palestine instead. The Zionist aim was not really to ensure the safety of Jews, but specifically to consolidate these migrants into a Jewish ethnostate. And that's because at its core, Zionism is Jewish nationalism. But wait, what is nationalism? Understanding this concept is crucial because it really is the core of Zionism. 
When I say nationalism, most people probably think I mean nativism, the ideology and policy of privileging the interests of a country's natives over those of immigrants. Of course, these terms are socially constructed. American nativism is mainly how racist white immigrants communicate their hatred of non-whites. In Zionist narratives, Ashkenazi Jews are the ones who are native to Palestine, while Palestinians are supposedly migrants from the Arabian Peninsula. In any case, nationalism itself is a far more straightforward concept. In fact, it's so deeply ingrained in the way we commonly think about the world that you probably don't realize that you yourself may be a nationalist. Nationalism essentially boils down to two fundamental ideas. The first notion is that there are communities of people that constitute nations. It's a very basic notion that is hard to get away from, as it's deeply embedded in the very language of politics. Even the name of the United Nations itself gives the impression that all the states of the world, which are ultimately no more than institutions and bureaucracies, are the literal and legitimate embodiment of the nations of the world. In fact, this reflects the second innovation of nationalism, the notion that states are the ideal form of nations. While we don't usually think about these things consciously, the marriage of the state and the nation in the nation-state construct is essentially the reasoning of those who view criticism of the state of Israel as anti-Semitic, an attitude that is really only possible if you equate the Israeli state with all Jews writ large. Just think of a flag. A flag is just an arbitrary state symbol. Nationalist sentiment is what connects it to a personal identity. In the case of the Israeli flag, while it literally signifies the oppressive state of Israel, Zionists treat it as a symbol of their Jewish identity. It's really important to clarify, though, that in theory, the two fundamental principles of nationalism don't have to go together. You can think a certain nation exists without believing that just by virtue of existing, it must be connected to a state. Some anti-Zionists use this argument to say that even if the Jews are a nation, that doesn't inherently give them the right to a state, let alone the right to colonize Palestine. While this is a valid train of thought, it's a contrived solution that needlessly clings to the vague construct of the nation, a mishmash of ethnicity and political community that was specifically developed to grant legitimacy and strength to European state-building projects in the 18th and 19th centuries. In fact, Jews have recognized their common religion, history, and traditions for thousands of years before nationalism became fashionable in Europe. Yet the community never thought of itself specifically as a nation until recently, with the rise of Zionism and its state-building project. In fact, in the late 1800s, the consensus among Jewish intellectuals was actually against the entire idea of a Jewish state, and they were even more fervently against establishing one in Palestine specifically. While many Jews today are anti-Zionist in view of the actions of the State of Israel, the main reason the Jewish mainstream opposed Herzl back in the day was that the creation of a Jewish polity would be actually heretical. Only the Messiah, they argued, would, could, and should reunite the Jews, not Jews themselves. In fact, this is still the argument of anti-Zionist Orthodox Jews today. Anyway, I'm not saying this view is theologically valid or invalid. I'm not Jewish and I don't care. My point is just that unlike what Zionist propaganda suggests, Zionism is not some sort of Jewish theology. It originates as a secular national project that went against the religious consensus in the Jewish community at the time of its inception. That's just a fact. While I personally think the entire concept of the nation is artificial, it's ultimately for Jews to sort out whether they want to consider themselves an ethnicity, a religion, a nation, or something else. What is certain is that Zionism doesn't just argue that Jews constitute a unified nation, but also that as a nation, Jews should have their own state. It's Zionism's explicit linkage between nation and state that creates the conditions for the racist regime of the state of Israel, where non-Jews have limited rights. Now we can see how Zionism evolved over time, from the notion of a Jewish nation, to the need for a Jewish state, to support for the state of Israel. In this video, I've demonstrated that Zionism is a particular form of Jewish nationalism that is fundamentally tied to colonialism. Next time, we'll talk about the nation-state construct to see why Zionism is fundamentally linked to apartheid, unpacking the difference between a citizen, a national, and a native, how Zionism views these categories, and how they became inscribed in Israeli apartheid law. See you then.